You know, AI gets all the hype, but in its shadows, there's a revolution taking place. There's a new class of app that's really redefining productivity and collaboration for modern professionals. And they're really best described as all-in-one apps because they take the features of the apps you typically use disparately, like spreadsheets and word processors and CRMs and project management apps, and they form building blocks that you can use to create your own app for managing any type of information. And the savviest users of these apps are building really elaborate, cohesive, interconnected systems for managing all of their information in one centralized place where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts to achieve really profound levels of efficiency. And the top dogs in this space, kind of the two trailblazing apps, are Notion and Coda. And on the surface, Notion and Coda are more like each other than any other app. In both, you populate pages with rich content blocks to essentially build a custom app for managing any type of information within your own preferred workflow. They both have publishing and collaboration features, along with dynamic databases for structuring your information and displaying it through contextual interfaces. But when you dive a little deeper, Notion and Coda have distinctive advantages that make them suitable for particular types of users. I like to think of Notion as a simple and elegant Nespresso machine, while Coda is more like the Breville Barista. It's slightly less refined, but packing many more features, especially around integrations and automation. For some users, the choice is obvious, but many aren't quite sure where they sit on that spectrum of simplicity to capability. So I took a methodical approach to defining the key differences between Notion and Coda and presenting them in a way that makes it easy to identify which app's best for you or your team based on your priorities. In both apps, I implemented the Bulletproof Productivity Framework, which is really the most effective way to approach these all-in-one apps. And at its core is the same principle behind every app on your phone and website you visit, and that is to structure all your information in centralized master databases and then create nice contextual views for accessing that information. So developing Bulletproof in both Notion and Coda made it easy to spot their differences, and along the way, I recorded those differences, and then afterwards I grouped them into categories. So you'll find the full list of differences by category within the post on Productivity Nexus, which I've linked to in the video description, and I've also linked to both implementations of Bulletproof, the Notion version, and the Coda doc. And here I'm going to highlight the most notable of those differences, the ones that are really most likely to steer you toward one app or the other. Formulas offer a powerful way to generate content dynamically using other elements as inputs. They can calculate numbers, merge text, filter lists, and much more. In Notion, you use formulas only within formula properties of databases. But in Coda, you can use them pretty much anywhere. They can generate the value for any property of any type. And that includes the primary display or title property, which should always be unique. So I often use a formula to create a unique combination of other properties. To do that in Notion, I need to paste manually from a formula property or use an external automation tool like Zapier. And beyond database items, you can use Coda formulas in filters, buttons, automations, and right in line with text. And for its inputs, a Notion formula can only reference other properties of the same database item or related items. But Coda formulas can reference almost any item throughout the doc. So in the page body above a database of this month's expenses, we can write this month's projected expenses total, and then an equal sign, and then a formula that filters the database below for expenses and totals their values. And if I move the database to another page, the formula holds its reference to it. And while Notion formulas simply return a value, codas can actually modify the objects they reference or trigger actions. So for all the sample data in Bulletproof, I need each date to maintain its offset from the current day. And Coda can do that automatically. In a daily automation, I have a formula that loops through each database and updates its dates. And Coda's formulas can even engage with external apps. When you add an integration, it often comes with new functions for exchanging information or triggering actions. If we look at the Gmail integration, we can see that it comes with four functions, including one that returns a list of messages that match a given query. 
It goes without saying that automation is the most impactful way to streamline your workflow and boost efficiency. And it's another place that Coda really shines over Notion, which kind of baffles me because it's been a while since Notion acquired the automation app automation.io. Notion's automations are triggered only when adding or editing a database item. Coda offers those same triggers along with scheduling, form submissions, and webhooks sent by external apps, which really unleashes a whole new world of opportunities. So that date updater is triggered by a daily schedule. And then in terms of webhooks, one of my favorite uses is with Stripe. For any sort of transaction or update to a customer or subscription, Stripe can send a webhook with all related information for Coda to update the corresponding database where I manage that information. And then for actions after the trigger, Notion is limited to adding or updating database items or sending notifications within Notion or Slack. But Coda's actions can use those versatile formulas that can reference or modify virtually any element in the doc. And also unlike Notion, you can specify conditions in Coda that create filters or multiple routes. And Coda's automations can even engage with external apps. In addition to formulas, many of Coda's integrations come with their own automation actions. So going back to our Gmail example, we can configure an automation to send or draft an email, which you could use to create a mail merge system or send birthday wishes automatically. Despite their all-in-one classification, you'll always complement Notion or Coda with other apps. With integrations, you can connect them to other apps to maintain a cohesive system that syncs information and facilitates automations across your tool stack. And Notion and Coda both have a robust integration library that's expanding quickly. Some of Notion's integrations exchange information with external apps, but most just allow you to authorize apps for embedding content in your Notion pages. In Notion, integrations feel like more of an add-on, while Coda's integrations, or packs, are more essential to the platform. Notion calls its integrations connections, which is an umbrella term for any program connecting Notion within external apps. That includes connections that are established and managed from other apps, like Typeform. Coda tightly packages its integrations as packs. When you install a pack for an external app, it integrates the app throughout the Coda doc, as we've seen with Gmail. So we saw how packs add formulas and automation actions that engage with the external app. In Notion, connections can't add formulas or automations. A few sync databases with external apps, but they're mostly geared towards developers, like integrations with GitHub, GitLab, and Jira. But in Coda, database syncing is another core feature of packs. So sticking with our Gmail example, the pack can sync databases of individual messages or threads that match a given query. And packs also extend the capability of buttons. The Gmail pack includes buttons that send or draft emails. The actions of buttons and notions are confined to notions. Whether you use these apps individually or with a team, you'll definitely share content and likely want to collaborate on it too. The most notable distinction within the sharing and publishing category is that you can publish a Coda doc to a custom domain. That means with very little effort, you can create a really robust website or web app with no Coda branding. So I often use Coda docs as microsites of my primary sites, especially when I publish lists of recommended apps or products. With Coda's databases, I can display them in dynamic ways, and visitors can easily apply filters and interact in other ways. And in fact, the full Notion Coda comparison on Productivity Nexus is a published Coda doc with a custom subdomain. In Notion, pages are managed in workspaces, within which you have the option to organize them in team spaces. And then you manage sharing by workspace, team space, or individual pages. Within Coda workspaces, pages live in docs. You can sync pages between docs, but otherwise they're pretty isolated, and sharing is controlled at the doc level. That means pages with different sharing configurations must exist in separate docs. So for each of my clients, I have a collaborative portal. In Notion, that's simply an item of my resources database, but in Coda, it's an independent doc. And while Notion's approach is more conducive to a cohesive system, Coda's approach offers one enormous advantage that addresses my biggest request of Notion, and that is view-specific sharing and permissions. When you sync a Coda page that has a view of a database, only that view will be accessible by the people with access to the doc that contains that synced page. And then 
our next few categories focus on databases, which are obviously essential to Bulletproof and getting the most out of these all-in-one apps. Notion and Coda use different terms for databases and their elements. So here's a quick comparison. What's a database in Notion is a table in Coda. Coda calls a database property a column. And Notion calls the items of databases pages. Coda calls them rows. So I'm going to use the terms database, property, being their attributes, and item for the entries of the database. In Notion, each instance of a database can have multiple views. They display as tabs or a drop-down menu depending on the placement of the database. In Coda, each view of a database requires an independent instance of that database. So each contextual view of tasks, for example, requires a whole new database. And for the best user experience, that also requires an independent page. And Notion doesn't offer charts in any capacity, but for any database view in Coda, you can select the chart layout, then choose among many chart types and configuration options. When you group items in a Notion table, the group's label is given the full width of the database, with its items displayed beneath it. And that's much nicer aesthetically than Coda's approach of aligning groups to the left with their items displayed to the right, especially when the group names are long. Notion offers subgroups within board layouts, which is really only useful for a narrow set of content types. It's really not useful for financial transactions and other databases that work best with a table layout. Coda supports nested grouping or groups within groups, which is more universally useful. In Notion, all groups are expanded by default, which can get chaotic visually. But in Coda, you can customize the default state of each group. Coda also offers conditional formatting like you'd find in a spreadsheet. Notion doesn't offer conditional formatting, and you actually can't even color a cell or a row. So I gotta confess, I'm a freak for forms. I love them for collecting information from people. They ensure I get exactly what I need and they structure the information for maximum usability. In Coda, you can display any database as a form for a simple way for people to submit new items. Notion integrates with some form tools, but it doesn't support forms natively. Within relation properties in Notion, when you click to choose related items, it can only display all items and you have no choice for sorting them. In Coda, you can apply filters to display only the items that you want as option, and you can also apply sorting rules. So for choosing a payee for financial transactions, we can display only vendors, clients, and affiliates. When you open or expand a database item in Notion, you see its title, its properties in a single column, and then a freeform page body. You can selectively display or hide properties, and relations can appear as their own page section. In Coda, an expanded database item includes only its properties. It has no page body, but the canvas property type can act as one. And Coda gives you much more control over the formatting of properties. You can arrange them in columns, adjust font sizing, and display relations in any of its database layouts. And this approach retains the benefits of structured data while allowing you to create a nice visual interface. But in Coda, properties can only be shown or hidden. It doesn't share Notion's option to hide properties automatically when they're empty. And Coda also doesn't share Notion's ability to create subpages within expanded database items. You can create databases within those canvas properties, but not subpages. Relative to other apps, Notion's databases are particularly mobile friendly, and Coda's just are not. And on mobile devices, Notion displays the sidebar within a traditional mobile menu. Coda adds a mobile navigation menu at the bottom of the screen. It displays up to four pages with their titles set above their icons for a really rich app-like experience. And then the full menu can be toggled from the top. And both Notion and Coda display their sidebars across all devices. But for laptops and desktops, Coda offers the option of a header nav instead of that sidebar, which along with the ability to publish to a custom domain, creates more of a true website experience. And Coda also allows you to hide pages from the sidebar, which I love for administrative pages that most users don't need to see. In Notion, if a user can access a page, it's unable to be hidden. Notion's buttons can insert pre-configured blocks or add or update database items, but they can't use formulas or integrations. And In Coda, buttons can access virtually any element of the dock to perform any action. They support formulas, and most packs come with buttons that engage with the external app. The Gmail app comes with buttons for sending and drafting emails. 
So that's about half of the most important differences between Notion and Coda. For the full list, visit the Productivity Nexus post linked in the description so you can choose which of these powerful apps is best suited to supercharge your productivity. And be sure to subscribe to Productivity Nexus for more insights around systemization, automation, and AI.